Alex Hansery here, October 11th, 2015. This is a rather large subject, but in times like these, with so many people living the American refugee experience, with so many homeless, we need to recenter our attention at the disappearing male worker, at the expendable single male, not simply just single white male, but single male. And we have a society that for a substantial amount of time uh, has had a media industry that thrives on using sex, female beauty, to sell products. And we've seen this model imported into many businesses and the values of society itself that spends a great deal of time on the material world, on physical, external beauty. And traditionally throughout time, the world's oldest occupation, as they call it, we see more people resorting to that in their relationships, those basic principles of, of selling your sexuality to the highest bidder. Likewise, on the other side of the coin, if you will, Many are also drawn into law enforcement, military, working for the government, and giving their energy away in that sense towards these structures in order for them to make a living. So we, we see a variant of people prostituting either their body, their time, their morals, and integrity. We also see changes in society where there are changes in consciousness where people no longer want to do certain things, so they opt out. And there's a variety of things to opt out from other than just simply a TSA pat-down. So you have men that are opting out from the way things were, especially since things changed, where we saw even more outsourcing of jobs, elimination of jobs after 2008, 2009. Many men were forced to go their own way, and in the process of losing their business or losing their job, in many cases, some men have lost their girlfriends or lost their wives. Many men have also gone their own way, and they have opted out from the dating scene because our society has been plagued by materialism, where the amount of money that a man has, this type of thinking, has expanded and extended into all different types of demographics of our society. And so... Relations between men and women are at an all-time low, ultimately. Those that are influenced by the system, by mass consciousness, you add in racial tension, you add in political beliefs, you add in other things that divide people and cause clashes. We're in a world where we're bombarded with so much information, so many threats, they get us to identify with certain boxes, and when they do that, and they win at succeeding, convincing an individual to uh, give up their own ability to think for themselves, and they get them to identify with being a victim, and they keep people on the defensive, and they keep people in a state of fear of XYZ group that's conveniently featured as in the media. And so it, it's a complex subject to approach when you're looking at the outsourcing of jobs, society divided, gender warfare. And so there are scores of men that have been displaced. The manufactured gender warfare play out with jobs commonly results in situations where a man is passed up for a female and discrimination in the workplace, whether or not it was right in the past. Of course, racial and sexual discrimination based on gender isn't okay, and things that happened in the past were not okay. But instead of actually dealing with the root of what went wrong within society, when it succumbed to the illusion of separation, started placing more value over here than over here, instead of actually dealing with that, we have people responding saying, well, let me get mine. 
And so there are ways in which society is being socially engineered and under the guise of feminism and under the guise of women's rights, instead of genuine respect to the feminine, we see women pitted against men in the workplace specifically. I've also firsthand seen middle managers that have had their own preference for a female over a male simply because they were in power, they were in control, and they were more interested in what appeased them at the workplace, having beautiful women around them that they can talk to and flirt with on a, on a professional level. In many cases, I've actually been shocked to hear about the amount of former restaurant managers that I've had that have been former for sexual harassment or just straight up sex with staff, sometimes underage, getting kinky with it, getting dangerous with it, getting abusive, I would say, with one's power and authority. We still live in that day and age. We walk into a bar and you see the silhouette of the female being used to sell stuff. She's got no head. Does she need a head? All we could see is boobs on a chick in a referee outfit with a Coors Light or a Budweiser advertisement. And this still works on people. You also notice how men and women both can enjoy a strip club together. Going and seeing some titties. Seeing a girl take off them panties. Woohoo! Yeah! Get an animal with it. You don't necessarily see a the average straight male go along with his chick to the male strip club and be like, wow, that, that, that's an impressive torpedo. Can he make that bounce just by thought itself? Wow, that's talent. Here's 50. <clears throat> Without going too deep off topic, looking at the human species and all the manipulation that's taking place of our DNA and our bodies and social engineering and all this programming to be constantly responsive to sexual programming, to sexual advertising, to sell our sexuality, to misuse our sexuality, to be immoral with our sexuality. That would be lying to people. Or taking something that isn't being given with consent. There's plenty of ways people misuse their sexuality. But our adulterated nature as it is, as opposed to our true nature, the human being that's been adulterated and put, other, put under different control mechanisms. The very things that can draw someone to someone through a variety of means can be controlled, can be influenced through means beyond even the physical. And Earth itself is a petri dish for larger experiment. And to conquer the human species, man and woman has to be divided. And the unfortunate end result of good men being displaced by society that aren't going along to get along is that there are that many potential protectors of a tribe removed and banished from the tribe that's still living in the matrix that has some sort of resentment against those males that are opting out because this level of slavery is so expansive and so much dependence has been placed on the government on the police on the military on the national guard the role of the male the good male in society that role is disappearing we're, we're experiencing the end result of decade after decade of the outsourcing of American jobs and a growing dependency on the service industrial complex the industry within our country running on restaurants and people going out and eating and going out to hotels and spending money and tourism and it really doesn't do anything for anything except you know create some profit for those that created the energy to provide that service but with manufacturing dead and with the economy in ruins and more and more Americans not to mention more and more Americans in the criminal justice system we hit 2000 we had more prisoners than Russia per capita 
the social repercussions of good men getting entangled and distracted and pulled into the criminal justice system because they're homeless, because they're on the edge of society, because they have been exiled, because either their job has been destroyed, or because they're opting out from slavery, or from some other situation or reason. Opting out from spending their life in absolute terror and anxiety. Living in the grid, trying to play by its system as a, as a consumer, paying rent on something that they won't own. And seeing that despite all the years they work for something, what did it ever mean? What did it ever account to? Amount to? We can look at the relationship failures and those that have been left behind by their loved ones when they lost everything. So what was worth it? What was worth it about spending one's life 40 hours a week for 20 years, 30 years, only to see your job destroyed, to be pushed out in the street, to see a counterfeit care for the homeless, but to, in reality, experience the criminalization of homelessness, to experience the American refugee experience as his car shoots by at full speed and slows down. <clears throat> we have men in this society that have chosen voluntarily to sell their soul to the corporation. Nor do some of these men have compassion for other men that are choosing to go without that sports car, that are more concerned with the human experience than making money for somebody else. See, it, it actually goes deeper into people cutting their own way and embracing the, as it's referred to, the philosopher's stone. You know, like that song from Leonard Skinner, Simple Man. It's a great song. That pretty much exemplifies the point I'm trying to make. In a society, in a day and age, where many men have never had a rite of passage, there are men going out that have not lost it, that are opting out from giving their time to somebody else. They're opting out from chasing the opposite sex in some cases due to the, the gross percentage of people in the society that have had their minds polluted by materialism. There are people opting out from living in cities and just doing the same old thing and there are people on this spiritual journey but in a way it's like 1984 where you have those that are in the party and you have like the subhumans that are operating outside that society and the real world that we're in now in 2015 is incrementally starting to mirror that where you have whole groups of men that are leaving society potential protectors and decent men and then you're looking at those that are left in societies, those that are, you know, manning those ships, so to speak, the battle stations of the corporations, the people that work in those buildings, they're still living those lifestyles, and there's a vast difference in consciousness, and there's a vast difference in energy, in the energy of the cities, with all that unnatural, electromagnetic pollution, cell phone towers, smart meters, vast difference in energy between that and somewhere off the grid. Without all that, without all that infrastructure, without all those people. And so the, the path of the independent male, or female in some cases, but this video is specifically about a very large group that makes up a lot of men of different ages and different racial backgrounds. that have had their role in society erased. A society where people don't really know each other, nor want to, in a world with so much fear, in which people are taught to only rely on the police if someone's breaking into your house or hurting you. To rely on a cell phone, to rely on satellites and technology on the grid. On the very beast system itself, 
we might as well in the future call an artificial intelligence machine for help if we're attacked or if anyone's raped or if countries are invaded we just pull out the robots that are also replacing men in the military when you replace men in the military a man with conscious with a consciousness and you outsource his job and you have a robot do his job a drone Sure, there may be men operating those drones today. Certainly, that's not going to be the case for tomorrow. We have these drones that never have to come down. They're powered by the sun. And who knows what type of laser weapons will be used in the future on the survivors, the surviving human species. But this is all about attacking a society. I didn't want to use, so I paused the word extinguish or exterminate because this isn't over yet and this is going to be going on for a very long time we don't have to get into what we're doing here on the earth right now or in this matrix but those questions those questions ultimately are where we end up when we realize the threat of what we face as they prepare to stage this manage world war and then Build with a new union uniting China, Russia, and the United States with technology and self-driving cars and all this stuff that they plan to roll out after they destroy the front of the old world order. It's still the same world order. It'll be called the new, new world order. A new global cooperation to fight poverty, to fight illness, to fight climate change. But we're moving into something big. And whatever this is, isn't being controlled by a few secret societies that you're aware of, that we can track. It isn't center around the Bilderberg group. It may involve these groups and front men, but what's really controlling this show is far more advanced. But what you need to know is that it's anti-human and that the social engineering that we're seeing in today, society, today, society, today's media, manufactured events on every level, to divide people, get them into a box, get them to feel defensive, and want to attack this false enemy that they've been told is their enemy. So it's divide, waste energy, the ongoing attack on the family, concurrent attack on off the grid, and on top of that, you have off the grid parents under attack from the state if they don't vaccinate or if they don't have running water so we're being incrementally herded and, and almost locked into this reservation and you have men and women alongside each other that ultimately don't know how to relate to each other in a world with a manufactured artificial value system and almost that into our genes where we're, we're more and that's what I was getting at earlier Humans respond to that sexual programming. You can see the male and female both go out to the strip club and the female enjoys it because it's even in her DNA as a human to lust after the female. It is not built into the male DNA as a whole collective for us to lust after a naked erect penis. What I'm getting at is that there's something about the human species and the way it's been locked into this five sense reality and biologically, in our hormones, in the way that we've been designed to procreate and make a many of us, a many of slaves on the earth. Because that hardcore DNA wiring that's locked in, right now we're at the end result of a lot of procreation and a mass of humanity. And a lot of that came about from that locked in primate thirst and desire for the earth female. And so, because it's also in females today, they can go along with this type of reality to where they're sexualized but rewarded. Sexualized but rewarded. And as long as we're in a system that's rewarding and pitting one class against another and there's no real education or healing or understanding that we've all been kind of affected and oppressed by the same forces but they get us to focus on gender warfare and they want the men angry at the women and they want the women angry at the men now in reality we all know it takes a male and a female 
to make either a male or a female, female or male. But in this new world, this new brave new world we're in, where you can clone human bodies and you can do perceivably the unthinkable, the value in that male-female connection is being eroded and it's being forgotten and especially by my younger generation it is horrifying it is absolutely horrifying all this dependency on the government that they've got so many females locked into is not going to end out well it's not going to end up very peaceful or safe for those women that have seen this government as a protector for some time simply because those ruling forces over this media, over this government, involved in other countries have created circumstances to where things are far worse. And so by comparison, yes, we are in a form of paradise. While also being in hell. You can have a hell realm and have one part of that hell realm have apple trees and fruit trees and all different types of pleasures of the flesh. For miles on end, doesn't mean that you're not still in hell. Doesn't mean that you're not still in a realm where you only get to have those pleasures because it's being taken away from someone else. Or because you have a flated economy that's built on fraud. This will continue on, this extermination, slow extermination, although it's not full complete, of the good males of this society, until consciousness changes. We have a reward punishment system where those men that abide by the system that go out and make the money, baby, those men that play the game, are rewarded by aspects of society where those that opt out are punished. In this world, the value system has been inverted. So as a result, you will see less safe streets. You'll see more mental illness in the population and more women generally suffering and taking antidepressants because they're not in a loving relationship where a man generally loves them. And even if they want that, it's very difficult now for a woman to gain a man's trust because of all the hurt that's been done the other way and back and forth. It's an echo chamber. There's been a lot of people hurting each other in relationships, all sexes involved, because of something that happened to them. And that is a subcategory that goes like this. What do you mean something happened to them? Well, where would you like to start? Would you like to start with what mommy did? Or what, would you like to start with what daddy did? Or do you want to get theoretical and wonder, you know, what else is going on? Heavens or cosmos that's affecting these clashes of civilization, but also affecting sexuality and male-female relationships. What about the environment? How we've destroyed aspects of the environment in rivers. And we've seen in some of these areas horrible crimes take place. It's almost as if the degradation to our environment brings demons out or something else that comes around to haunt humanity. And the ultimate way in which we are haunted by wicked spirits is the sabotage of our personal relationships and places where there is the potential for love, family, but love most of all. And between all people, not just romantic, but true community, true cooperation. So I would close here. And I would rethink any attitudes that you have it all figured out. I would rethink, reconsider any arrogance that there is no social engineering taking place. Not to mention the extreme sexualization of younger females and males in this society. All the heavy, heavy emphasis on all this spleen and symbolism and hypnotic music and conditioning children to identify materialism with shaking their ass. The children 
above all, are being targeted on a much more severe level than us that are adults that have been through our adolescence and are already past the college years. We've learned a few things. What about some of these children that don't know any better? That are targeted in a number of ways on the internet and led into these dark portals of reality to where their world is perverted. Think about where this is going and ask yourself, have at any point have you also looked at single men that have been exiled from society? How many of you are truly innocent of stereotyping those homeless men or those members of this society? For some of you, for a lot of you, I think a lot of you are good people. But when we talk about the world, when we talk about society, mass consciousness, that is another story. That is another story entirely. The world looks at these men that have gone their own way as mentally ill. And because they look at them as mentally ill, they view them as a potential threat. Thus, when they need the help or the step up or the work or the direction or guidance or the love, they don't receive it. There's a lot of unhappy women on this planet right now that are living in houses and that have someone in their life that's paying the bills, but they're unhappy in that relationship. And for someone to escape that situation that at times could be abusive, they've got to evolve beyond a certain way of thinking and rating and, and seeing value in a man. It has to become more refined. And intuition needs to be involved. Intuition. A knowing. A sixth sense. When you're dealing with someone of a higher vibration that regardless of their economic status, a higher knowing and intuition that knows when you're in the presence of a good spirit. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in Portland. I've seen it elsewhere. Society hasn't changed. Society appears to be possessed with some sort of ailment of the spirit to where it is discarding what I feel are some of the most caring members of the human species because they are no longer going along with things that break their heart. And that would be the different forms of slavery. Whether it be walking away from being a slave, or walking away from a reality to where they're making slaves of others. There's this reference, biblical reference, to men's hearts failing them. And I think I'd like to add in we're also in a time of men's hearts healing. And that healing occurs when someone breaks their chains, and I mean all of them. That's also why you see some people go off food stamps and they don't take welfare, because they're looking to break every cord with dependency from the government or structure. Not just walking away from chasing people of this day and age and looking for some sort of praise from society. Not just walking away from, you know, making a few bucks to rent something they'll never own. But walking away from dependency on the government itself even in the simplest of ways. And so I really, really want to draw awareness of this issue. And also, it is important for men to be strong now. It is important to never let yourself think you're a victim. As we become aware of the discrimination taking place, racial, political, class, and more. Okay. It ain't by accident that we're on the earth.
Period. If we ended up here in this prison, something caused that. And I don't say that. Should I get you in this box of thinking you're a victim? We have to empower ourselves. And that means being who we are, regardless of how the world treats us. Saying what needs to be said, when it needs to be said. Exercising our divine masculine. If we need to speak out against somebody pushing somebody around, then we do it. Even if those members of that society don't even see the value in us warning them. We're speaking out against those that are doing the killing. Those that are doing the torture. Those that are destroying the society. We have to keep on keeping on. And keep doing what we're doing. We can look throughout time and we have seen good men persecuted, burned at the stake, tortured. We've seen them with their skin pulled off their body. In some cases, their whole family raped and disfigured as well. The body is temporary. Make no mistake about it. And physical intimidation and things of the flesh are just simply there to keep us in a fear of not surviving or fear of being the nail that stands out and eventually getting hit. takes real bravery to op operate outside that matrix that keeps so many people under control. Literally the world could change overnight if men and women came together and if their consciousness was not clouded by today's programming. If they're able to come together as human beings and love each other and not look at each other with fear and not bring all the pain and baggage from all the all the horrible things that happened to them in their previous relationships with their parents and other significant others. If they could just come to the table in a clear space and also come together with other people in the community and not just be, well, this is about our family. Screw your family. You know, th that's the biological blueprint. It's all about us and our own physical. But you know what? There is something about human love between male and female that can be powerful. When man and woman is working together and they're speaking truth. When I see couples out there in the alternative media speaking truth, there's something powerful about their frequency. About their very voice. The very fact that they are doing this together. You can hear it in their voice. In her voice. In his voice. So, I, I'm just here as a messenger. I certainly don't have all the answers. But people have been mind controlled into thinking that certain members of society that are operating outside the monetary system in some way. This view that they have no value has become a problem that has not been addressed as Mr. Sports Car just drives by. And so society is already seeing and facing the repercussions without even realizing how this messed up value system is threatening the public safety overall from the nation state to the cities to also how this unbalanced reality sometimes influences crime okay it plays on mental illness and those that are already mentally ill unfortunately in some cases in today's society they snap instead of just having a giant police state with robotics running the whole thing and creating special camps to put those that lose it and disarming people and everything else uh, we could be living a completely different way <laughs> however for the time being we are still in this world of propaganda and technology and I don't think anything short of a major solar flare or other event you know that would disrupt the grid disrupt cell phone service and actually force people to work together something like that could be an energy resetter between men and women you know in some ways humans are still going to be humans and you're going to see you know like certain alpha male personalities and dominator personalities the types of human beings that traditionally human beings with monkey minds support and give their power to people that want to take charge and lead people even after a major event or disaster or solar flare, you would still have that nonsense going on. But, because of that absence of all the distractions, 
mankind and womankind have a better chance at healing that, that collective trauma be, be, between the male and female, which is really within ourselves. If you put that technology aside and people are growing food together, and the amount of money that a person has, the amount of stuff obviously will matter to a degree. But if there's a situation where money was wiped out as we know it, if you think about this carefully, the way that women view men would change. And with some of them, it could come down to, is he a good man or not? Not how big is his house or how many cars does he have. In a survival situation, his sense of humor and how agreeable he is to any one of a hundred social demands of him to be a certain way, all that will also change. Can he actually protect her? Is he intelligent? Is he aware of where those bombs are coming from? Does he know what's happening? Who the fuck knows what's happening? Does he have the background information? Of course, in a disaster situation, you're still going to have the women with the thugs. Straight up dudes that are raping women and taking them into their tribe, they're going to move as some sort of strange movement through society. But it's going to be a game changer if we have a grid down situation. <clears throat> For people to unplug from centralization of authority and be thrust into a situation where they have to be responsible for what goes down in their own community. Federal government is gone. Potentially. In some areas. Infrastructure is gone. It's going to be down to how do we eat? How do we protect ourselves? How do we get our water? How much is our love for each other going to keep us alive? I'm going to conclude here. You know, sometimes through a threat or a disaster, good things can come. And some people believe that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes we don't know if a situation is good or bad until long after it's happened that we can reflect on everything that's happened since then. Can you imagine the shifts in the energy on the planet? If they were men and women loving each other as they prayed for their lives. If they were to lock in with the things that mattered. If they were for just a moment to be free. Can you imagine the kind of influence that that would have on our planet's magnetic field? And how that type of human love, how much of a threat that could be to those forces of darkness tearing our world apart. If humans have forgot the power of love, the universe could potentially create events that restore us to harmony. I'm Alex Hansery, sign off from Alamosa, Colorado, October 11th, 2015.